The year is 48 BC. 12 months prior, Julius Caesar has crossed the Rubicon. His now enemy, Pompey the Great, has fled Italy. Caesar waits for the right opportunity to give pursuit and then crosses the Adriatic Sea. And so here at Pharsalus in central Greece, two vast Roman armies are about to clash. If Pompey is victorious, the Roman Republic will be restored. If Caesar wins, the glory of Rome awaits him. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Battle of Pharsalus. Um, as you can see, this is a battle replay. It was absolutely fantastic. I had a great time playing out this battle. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy it today in this video. Now, don't think that this is going to be an absolute 100% replica of the battle. Uh, there is some facts that are altered for this clash today from what obviously happened in the year 48 BC. For one, the river is on the wrong side. It was actually on Caesar's left flank and Pompey's right flank so that is a little bit of an alteration and in the battle itself yes Pompey was drawn off from the high ground where he originally had his troops positioned um, but in the actual fight itself Caesar was classed as really as the aggressor in the battle whereas today Pompey is going to be more the aggressor so as I say there's going to be things that will be slightly different from what you probably have expected in terms of historical accuracy but nevertheless it is a great experience and I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. This is sort of the start of a new style of videos on the channel so I'm going to be obviously finding out some really great battles across a number of total wars with the face cam switched on to try to try to you know to engage with you guys sort of build up that engagement with you as the viewers let me know if you like this let me know if you are happy with this new video format i am i'm really i'm really excited to see where we can take this and i'm really looking forward to future content that i can make but by all means you know, show your support if you are happy and looking forward to it, to it as well drop the video a like but obviously i value your feedback massively with these kind of videos so you know do let me know down below in the comments if you want me to change anything if you want me to turn face cam off if you had enough of my face already then i will definitely be happy to switch it off but i kind of want it to be turned on in a way i think it will help with engagement as i said so you know let me know if enough of you do say it i will turn it off but we'll see so as well maybe that there could be various things that i could alter as time goes on so let me know of any sort of options or suggestions you guys have got and as well you know future battles what other battles do you want to see on the channel what other total wars do you want me to play on the channel as we go forward with these kind of videos but if you have got battle replays of your own that you want me to cover then be sure to send them to me i have an old replay email address that i can use i've linked it down below in the description i think it's called warrior of sparta replays at outlook.com so there's a link to it in the description so if you want to send any replays to me then be sure to send the email to that link and I will look to cover them in future videos. The end goal, of course, with this, I feel I think we've got to the point now where we need to try and start looking at creating a Discord. Um, get my own Discord channel set up. That would be great, obviously, to build up community. Get all you guys involved in a central sort of hub. And as well, it will be an excellent way for you guys to be able to share replays and drop them in the Discord channel for me to pick up and look at at a later date. So I'd say probably in the next couple of months, I'll be looking to get that Discord channel set up and uh, I will let you know, of course, when that is done. So these one-off battles that I'm going to be doing where they're going to be edited down to make sure the action is as much involved and compacted into the video as possible is going to be great, but it can't be done on its own. It's got to be involving you guys, as I say, supporting me, giving me the content, giving those replays to be able to cover at a later date. But also, it's people like this person who was involved. In fact, there was about six people involved in this video today, but one in particular was Ellington Total War. The guy is fantastic. I only sort of I got to know him about a week or so ago, and I spoke to him for the first time yesterday when we did this battle. 
He's a great, great laugh, really uh, likeable guy. He's got his own Total War channel, and I've got to give him a shout out because it, if it wasn't for him, then I wouldn't have been able to make this battle. He really got involved in it, helped out with how we could do it, how we could put it together, what units to use, and as well, he got the other guys involved to help out build up the numbers for the clash itself so yeah go check him out he's got a great youtube channel he definitely deserves more subscribers than he's got um, he does some fantastic rome 2 battles you know in sieges and pitch battles so go check him out his link to his channel is in the description and no doubt no doubt at all i will definitely be doing more battles with him in the future so expect to see him on the channel at some point uh, in the next few weeks and months but yeah check him out link to him in the description down below so look at this i've got myself positioned at the front line of caesar's troops and look at that look at that sight that these guys are seeing there this huge army of pompeys coming down the hillside about to engage because in the battle itself i think i think it was about thirty-eight thousand units of legionnaires you know, mixed with auxiliary units for Pompey and about 22,000 for Caesar. But that's not to include, or I should say, that doesn't include the vast amount of cavalry that Pompey had. Yes, it wasn't the best. The standard of the cavalry wasn't the best. It was sort of hired for the battle, auxiliary cavalry. But look at the amount that Pompey has got. It is incredible. So... This is where he has got to use this part of his army as effectively as possible. Because if he overwhelms Caesar's cavalry on the flank, then it allows him to push in and start hitting Caesar's left side here. And start to gradually work away, away its way across and weaken Caesar's more veteran units considerably. I mean, this is where Caesar has got the advantage. His units... They are veteran units. They have had a lot of experience, a lot of fighting time in Gaul. They've been brought down to Greece today. Pompey's army isn't as good. It is more of a new batch of troops which aren't as experienced, aren't as battle-hardened. And, you know, that's where, yes, the numbers are on Pompey's side, but the experience is on Caesar's side. So it's only, you know, what, which way it could go, only time will tell. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, why Pharsalus? Why was this the first battle that you decided to do for this new kind of format of videos? It's because it's with this battle that my love for Total War grew. This is where it all started in a way. Because a lot of people may not have heard of this. Because if you are new to Total War in the last couple of years, you may have never heard of this. But there was a show in the UK... In the sort of early 2000s, I think it was about 2003, 2004, called Time Commanders. It was fucking incredible. Time Commanders is one of the best TV shows I have ever seen. If you don't know what it is, then I implore you to go and watch. The, the, look it up on YouTube after this video. Look up Time Commanders and you will be amazed. It will open up a library of videos for you to, to feast upon. Effectively, Time Commanders is when four uh, people, uh, you know, a group of people who know each other, friends or colleagues from work or school, university, whatever, will get together and will fight against uh, an AI faction and they will play a historical battle from years gone by. And this is one of the first episodes that I ever saw was the Battle of Pharsalus. Now, at the time... I had no clue about Total War as a game. You can imagine, 2004, the internet was still early in its sort of... It was in, 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 it was in its infancy. So, information wasn't as widely accessible as it is today. And so, yeah, I didn't know about Total War then. And I watched this episode of, of, of Time Commanders. And I thought, this is absolutely incredible. Can you imagine being able to play a game like this? It would just be just amazing, wouldn't it, to be able to get a, an army of this size and fight out an historical battle on a computer game. It would just be incredible. So I started to look it up. So I started to look it up and I saw that there was a game called Medieval Total War. Now at this time I did not make the connection because I couldn't find anything about Time Commanders 
and anything about what game it was being used on or what engine it was being used on. I couldn't find anything about it. So I went to the local game store and I bought Medieval Total War. I still didn't make the connection at this point. And I played it. I thought, yeah, this is quite similar. Obviously, it's not the same. Uh, but it's okay. You know, I'm enjoying it. It's a pretty good game, Medieval Total War. Um, and it, you know, got me through the next few months. I think it was about a year later, year or two later, I was on the uh, internet and I was looking up Creative Assembly's website, which obviously at this point I knew who they were, and they announced Rome Total War. And my jaw didn't just drop, it dropped to the floor, to the ground floor, to the foundations of the house, and into the fucking Earth's crust. I couldn't, I, was, I couldn't believe it. Rome Total War was a thing. And obviously then I made the connection that this was all the same all along, that Credit Assembly were the guys behind Total War or Rome Total War, that they were the guys behind Time Commanders, and that the Time Commanders game was eventually coming out to be played in Rome Total War. So I, I honestly, I, I've never been so hyped for a game in the time that I can remember. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited for Rome Total War. So that's, that's where my Total War interest, my love for Total War became apparent and this is where the sort of journey began and now we're here recording videos for YouTube having been down to see the guys at Creative Assembly you know been to their offices so many times been to so many events that they've done and been able to make videos on their games so it's you know incredible that 16 years later this is where we're at so that's why I wanted to do this video today to let you know share the story with you about where this all came about and of course you know I want to hear your guys stories as well where was it that you first came to know about Total War where did your love for this game start so yeah definitely share your stories down below I'd love to hear from you and uh, see you know where it all started for you anyway let's begin let's begin let's see what happens in this clash today I mean you can see here we try to keep it fairly similar in terms of the uh, sort of, as I say, the experience that Caesar will have. So you can see here, we've got some Evocati cohort in the front line. It's loads of sort of veteran legionnaires, um, legionnaires, legionaries across the front here. And we've got some sort of Valites, Eagle cohort, the back Evocati cohort again. I'm um, just going back to the infantry before we go over to the cavalry on the, the left flank there. So we've got some, you know, you can see here there's veteran legionaries who are obviously experienced fighters from Gaul and kind of kept it that we've got a couple of Eagle cohort and first cohort mixed in. We've got these units of veterans of the second as well. Now these guys are just incredible. I think that's two mods I'm using today. Wolfman's Generals of Rome, which allowed us to actually get the... Um, character models of Pompey and Caesar etc into the mix and also uh, Ancient Empires it's sort of a reskin mod uh, that's been implemented I don't think it's not the mod that you actually can get for Ancient Empires a complete overhaul mod it's just the mod which will allow you to reskin various units and this is why you can see these Evocati cohort kind of looking different with the shields that they've got uh, the sort of yellow and blue shields that they have as opposed to the default skins that you would have uh, on the uh, the base game. So let's have a quick look if we can to see if we can get a little shot at Julius Caesar here. Now I know he's in this. There he is. There he is. That's Caesar himself. So he's positioned himself kind of on the left flank of the main army line of his forces. Now his cavalry are based over here. See if we can try and find Pompey as well. I can't guarantee it because you can see there's so many units here. I think this could be Pompey down here actually. Let's have a quick look. Is it Pompey? That can't be Pompey. Surely not. No, it's not going to be him. It should be actually labelled up with him. Here he is in this unit here. There's Pompey. There's Pompey himself. He's moving forward ready to uh, begin his assault with the main infantry units across the line there to begin bringing himself down to to meet Caesar. Uh, let's have a quick look at the tactical map here, just for a second. 
while we've got a little bit of chance. So as I said to you earlier on, you've got this flank here secured, both for Pompey and for Caesar. The river secures both sides for both armies, but it's here. As I said to you earlier, this is where Pompey has got the advantage. If he can bring these cavalry units down, overwhelm Caesar's cavalry on that left flank there, and then sort of drive them away from the battlefield, he's, it then enables him with his superior numbers. Obviously, his quality isn't as good. They are auxiliary cavalry, but it's the same as citizen cavalry, auxiliary cavalry. They aren't as good as Caesar's. However, the numbers may count here. And if he can then bring them across and start to push into Caesar's line here and start moving his way from left to right, this could cause the more experienced units of Caesar's infantry to start to buckle. And that's where we've got to be careful. That's where Pompey could win the day on this clash. This way, this way he wanted to do it. Oh, this is how he wanted to do it on the actual day itself in the battle. He was going to use his cavalry as much as possible to be able to win across and put pressure on Caesar's flank. It's if it happens today. Let's see. But I can see now the numbers aren't looking too good for Caesar. Look at this. Look at the massive amount of cavalry units. This is incredible. What a sight to see for a total war fan. It is incredible. And you can see here there's about 20,000 units on display for this replay today. It's incredible. You can see already looking at it like this, the numerical advantage that Pompey has got over Caesar. Already look at this as the line begins to move forward. So just quickly before we see the first engagement occur, looking at Pompey's army over Caesar's, as you can see, they've got legionaries in their front ranks, but they haven't got the experience. They haven't got the Eva Caddy cohort. They haven't got the veteran legionaries. They're just standard. They've got a couple of first cohort and eagle cohort in there. And yeah, you can see there some auxiliary infantry which were hired for the battle. But apart from that, they haven't got the experience that Caesar has got. They've got many lines of legionary cohort and legionaries there, as you can see. In historical terms, I think this is where it did uh, commence in the actual battle. Pompey's cavalry began to move forward and uh, this is where the first kind of engagement did start to take place. It's what happens with this part of the battle because I know that in the clash itself Caesar was able to support his cavalry. He kind of fainted a retreat with his cavalry units which then allowed him to bring in some infantry to support which then actually drove off Pompey's cavalry, the inexperienced auxiliary cavalry that he had were driven away by the infantry support because he fainted a retreat which then brought in that I say those infantry units to then push the cavalry of Pompey's away. So here we go. I think it was a bit premature with that early cavalry movement. It wasn't the actual charge beginning. Now it is though. Now we can see the first part of this Rome v Rome clash. The great generals of Caesar and Pompey coming to blows. This is going to be fantastic. Look here we go. Let's witness this part. As we can see, the two cavalry units coming to blows. Oh, as you can see, 20,000 units on the screen in one go. Does put a little bit of lag on the old PC, but hopefully it won't be too bad. And as, as more units do begin to sustain casualties, hopefully that will help with a bit of FPS boost as time goes on. But I'm looking forward to seeing these, these videos get uploaded to the channel. I think, um, you know, these heavily edited, broken down more action-packed videos will definitely be hopefully a bit more entertaining to you. I'm not, I mean, I'm going to try and cut out the boring bits where there's things that are not really happening happening in the battle, or there's you know waiting for deployment to finish off, or maybe in a siege battle where one phase is finished and another phase begins. You know that sort of stuff. Edit that. Edit that bit out so you can only have the good bits, the meaty bits uh, left in the video, which I think, as I say, will keep you guys more entertained and hopefully make for more. Uh, exciting video but as you can see here early stages obviously in this clash but the cavalry of Pompey seems to be having the upper hand a little bit of movement as you can see some units still not really engaging now they're going to begin to counter charge and hit Caesar oh my god Caesar's engaged already it's just a bold move. I don't know if Caesar should be doing this. He could be in trouble early on if he gets exposed. You know, you know, you don't want to lose Caesar early on in his battle. That will be a massive morale penalty to his army. 
Um, he seems to be doing all right, though. He's, he's sort of driving away the Citizen Cavalry unit over here. And this one is starting to break a little bit. Um, so maybe he's doing okay. But if he carries on being stuck in the engagement for too long, he could get bogged down. So as you can see here now, look at this. Pompey is starting to push very heavily on this right flank of Caesar. Yes, the river is securing both armies' flanks on either side, the left or the right, if you're looking from different directions. But at the same time, he's going to try, Pompey is, to put as much pressure on one side. And if he can, kind of break through that sort of that right side and then start to work his way over the line of infantry as it spans across the battlefield for Caesar. But we've got loads of engagements now, now happening across the line. The Eva Caddy cohort fighting the legionaries. Now I would imagine the Eva Caddy cohort are going to hold against these legionaries. They have got, as they say, the experience. They have got the better statistics behind them. So I would imagine they are able to hold for quite long periods of time. But the cavalry have won the day for Pompey. Look at the numbers still able to, uh, to fight on on this left-hand side of Caesar's flank. Looks like, is Caesar being surrounded over here? Is he still alive? Is he still alive? That's the most important thing. I don't know if he is. I can't see him in this absolute madness. I mean, can you imagine this in the actual battle itself when Roman forces were fighting Roman forces? It would be so confusing. Who would be fighting who? You know, if you were against a, another Roman unit, I mean, probably there was some way of identifying if it was an enemy or a friendly uh, friendly unit but at the same time there would be in the heat of battle a lot of confusion I would imagine I mean you look at this now I can't see who the hell's who if it wasn't for the unit banners so yeah this does hopefully show just how chaotic it was on the actual day but as I say there would have been some way I'm sure of establishing uh, identifying or identifying who was who in the clash but the strong line of Eva Caddy cohorts are bracing pretty well against Pompey's legionaries early on. There's some units that are still hanging back. Maybe they're just obviously waiting to see what happens. There is going to be some units coming down here possibly, which will engage in a minute. But look at the pressure that Pompey is putting on this right flank. If this buckles, then you're going to have to start getting units to come across. And that will then obviously weaken the line. And this is why you can see already some units of the veterans of the second are being brought across because you can see here this side is getting pummeled absolutely pummeled so yeah this is what is the fear for caesar the fact that yes if these units could have stayed here this center line would have been stronger but now these having to be brought across it's going to weaken the line in the central parts and maybe the left hand side as well I mean, look at this now these units that were initially over here with Pompey's cavalry have now come down the field and starting to put pressure on Caesar's left flank. So you can see what Pompey's trying to do early on. Yes, he is attacking in the center, but he's putting more emphasis on either flank, I would imagine, just to try and buckle them from each side. And then obviously that will then sort of push into the center and make it that uh, the, the middle ground, the more veteran units of the Evo Cati may be in trouble quite soon if we're not careful with this one but uh, as you can see now oh god let's zoom into this bit here some units of Pompey's are starting to uh, to retreat so if if Caesar's line can hold then we're okay I mean you can see here some units are starting to waver slightly losing the battle at certain parts some units over here completely routed. So the initial line is doing well. If it was just a central battle where there was no way that these units of Pompey could attack on the flanks, then I would imagine Caesar would be quite comfortable. But that's not going to be the case, is it? You know, as you can see here, the cavalry have regrouped. Push They're beginning up. to move over and uh, to, you know, looking to begin a second charge in a second. And there's a lot of pressure from these legionaries. And you can see now, gaps are starting to appear. And when gaps appear, that's when exploits can happen. That's when the enemy can start to filter through and get behind 
and then obviously out flank and that's when units will start to drop morale start to panic and yeah this is where the sort of advantage for Pompey in his numbers could start to come through but over here it's kind of back and forth as you can see some units of legionaries on the side there starting to wave out we've got the veterans of the second one of the general units is actually engaged on this side he was the uh, sort of general for the right flank and he's engaged now realizing that the threat of this right hand side is beginning to weaken he's had to engage himself and there's more units coming to aid as well the veteran leader is trying to engage as well to uh, to push the pressure back of Pompey it's just a vast line of units as you can see span the field and look at this look at this bulk charge now from about four or five auxiliary infantry and now going in to really put pressure on the Ivacadi cohort oh look at this what a glorious sight this is back and forth literally shoulder to shoulder there is no movement in it at all it's phenomenal to see it's looking on this side still it's 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 in the balance on the left here still very much could go either way the cavalry though where are the cavalry oh look at this the cavalry have come behind obviously they can they've got so much room to maneuver now now they've taken out Caesar's threat of cavalry. They're now able to manoeuvre. They've got the time. They've got the, uh, the the speed on their side to get the units of cavalry round the back. And you can see here, they're now beginning to outflank the uh, the Caesar's lines of uh, either Caddy cohort in the centre there. And that's going to put pressure straight away. They're taking out the ballista unit there. And this is going to start to panic Caesar's front line, no doubt. Where's Mark Antony? Has Mark Antony got himself engaged? I think he has. He's over here. Yes, Mark Antony has had to come over himself to try and help out. And see what he can do to sort of alleviate the pressure of Caesar's infantry line here. Look at this charge in the rear now. It's not going to help. Look behind you. Oh, my God. They were doing all they were doing all right there, the Evocati cohort. They were standing strong, but now with this rear charging, this cycle charging from Pompey's cavalry, this is gonna start damaging morale very, very quickly. And the problem is, you see, once a gap appears in the line of infantry for Caesar, once one part of it's broken, a chain route to start will start to kick in as Pompey's units start to filter through the gaps. That's when the line will start to buckle very, very quickly. And you know back on the day of the battle itself in 48 BC what Caesar was able to do once he dealt with Pompey's cavalry he was able to bring his units forward his his right flank or yes it was his right flank of units were able to start sort of going behind Pompey's forces and then were able to start pushing across and pushing across and pushing across and basically wiping out Pompey's line from from right to left and to the point where on the left hand side it was so completely surrounded and he just completely uh, mass routed. And it's kind of happening ironically here, but in reverse, Pompey is starting to put pressure on this side with his cavalry as well, and start to buckle across. And if he can do it from the right hand side as well, the center will just completely capitulate. You can see here Mark Antony trying to desperately deal with these remaining forces of Pompey's cavalry. Unit of Prima Extraordinary Spear units trying to go across to uh, see if they can cut off Pompey's cavalry there, maybe. And look at this, look at this here. This is a problem. Look at that now. Those cycle charges are starting to do a significant amount of damage on veterans of the second here because the gaps are forming. This is where we got the problems coming now. If they can start pushing through Pompey's units now, this is this could be the beginning of the end for Caesar. We're doing okay on the left, left flank, and there's a couple of units here, there's quite a few actually, of uh, Caesar's left side still intact. So it's not looking too bad there, but over here, it's not as good. It's not as good, and over on the right hand side, it's looking quite precarious. The right has buckled eventually. And that's not looking good because you can see how many units of Pompey's forces are here. There's about, what, 15 units that are now going to be able to push on. And the center, where the most experienced units of Caesar are, where the most experienced of Evo Caddy and the um, veteran legionaries are, are situated, 
they are not going to hold for long if it's going to carry on where you can see there and here are both hitting the sides and the central parts of the units there. Mark Ante still desperately trying to hold on as you can see here. So Caesar's force is now bringing themselves across from the left to the right flank, maybe trying to push on to uh, envelop Pompey's forces there. Um, over here, they're now regrouping Pompey's right. And so the desperate last attempt of last attempt attack of Mark Antony is sort of unfolding here. There's too many forces though of Pompey still in action and he's already brought Pompey himself across to try and deal with the remnants of the Prima Extraordinarii and the veteran legionaries. Look at this though, Mark Antony trying to maneuver himself for another charge against these veterans of the second of Pompey's units of general there. Desperately trying to hold on for as long as possible. But, you know, with this being... I think this is a veteran of the second unit that Pompey has got in his control. They're going to hold on for a long period of time. And even cycle charges won't do well. And look at that now. They're starting to filter through. Now Pompey's forces are starting to find the gaps. And are starting to filter through. Oh, this could be the beginning of the end for Caesar. Because look at this now. In mass, they're starting to maneuver across. Look at the remains of all the dead bodies on the right-hand side here. What an awful sight this is as we span across the lines there. But look at this. They've dealt with Caesar's right. They're regrouping there. They're getting behind the lines as well. And this is where it could start to crumble very, very quickly. It's kind of interesting. There's a line here of Caesar's infantry. A line here. And the right's gone. The right pretty much has gone. So it's like this for Caesar now. There. Whereas if we go onto a tactical map for... Yeah, look at that. It's that kind of like a V-shape. And then you've got Pompey surrounding on either side. As we're trying to desperately hold in this V formation. It's kind of Caesar's last stand. I think Caesar's been killed, unfortunately. He has, he has been taken out early doors with that um, initial charge that he did it proved to be fatal I would have kept Caesar back he's a massive advantage to have on your side especially in the later stages of the battle now he's been lost obviously that's going to cause a penalty to his forces the morale would drop considerably and even though they are experienced units still losing Caesar is a massive massive uh, kick in the teeth massive army loss penalty and it's not going to help uh, as we fight on. And they're desperately trying to hold off. But if Caesar could have been kept alive, he could have been positioning himself around the back here, raising morale, being there in sort of helping uh, keep strength of these units high. But because he's gone, it's not looking great at all. They are holding back. I mean, this unit here has driven back Pompey's forces there. It's kind of... They're sort of what they're trying to do is, I think, regroup, get everything from the right hand side across, and then in force we'll move on Caesar's forces in one go. But look at this Pompey, sorry, uh, not Pompey, Mark Antony's still trying to hold off these legionary cohorts. And look at this now, these three units will then able to be going to the back and then go like that, and that will be devastating for Caesar's legionaries there. With a broken formation there. They're trying to regroup and hit these units in the back, possibly. The balance of power is way in Pompey's favour now. It was obviously in Pompey's favour to begin with, with the numbers. But it's creeping even further in the, uh, in the direction of Pompey now. And look at this. We are starting to crumble. Caesar is starting to crumble quite significantly there. There's some units here that are desperately trying to give one last charge for the glorious Caesar. But it looks to me like Pompey is going to come through. And if he does, as I said to you at the beginning, the Republic or the Roman Republic will be restored. The threat of Caesar will be destroyed. He will be completely finished off. And then obviously the Senate will be secure. 
and the Republic will live on. So yeah, this is what I love about Total War. As you can see here, the remaining forces of Caesar begin to drop. This is what I love about Total War. You know, we've got it as it was in history, but Total War, you can change it. You can rewrite history and make it your own. That's why that's the beauty of it, and that's why I love this game so much. And this is why I love a lot of historical Total War so much. You can change the history books in every single clash you do. In this scenario, it was it was awesome to have, awesome to do. And uh, yeah, it's looking like Pompey is this day going to be the victor. Um, and a big thanks to Ellington, as I said to you at the beginning, for putting this battle together, getting the players into his Discord to be able to fight it out. It was six players in total, um, getting the units put forward, suggesting which um, you know armies to bring, what army bills to put together, and just all in all, making it happen as i said great guy check him out link to his channel in the description and i will be sure to cover more battles with him in the future as there we go a costly enemy victory is secured for pompey what a battle i thoroughly enjoyed it what a way to start this new format of videos there about twenty thousand units on the screen in one go but yes in the end I, it's a kind of an ironic twist. What Caesar did to Pompey, Pompey in this battle did to Caesar. He hit from both flanks, pushed forward. His cavalry, his numbers of cavalry made it that they were able to overrun Caesar. Caesar in the battle, as I said, was able to uh, drive with the support of infantry Pompey's forces away in his, in his units of cavalry. But in this clash, Pompey's were stronger. They pushed Caesar away. It meant that the left side of his army was, was exposed. They put a lot of pressure on the right-hand side as well. That buckled. Either side started to disintegrate. And the centre became uh, exposed. And that last debt, that last ditch V formation was trying to hold out as long as possible. But the rear charges were deadly. Yeah, the enemy were able to funnel through. And with the cavalry and the infantry able to hit in the rear... And obviously, in the end, meant that even the strong, brave veteran legionaries were, even they weren't able to withstand the uh, the force of Pompey. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this first battle today. I will get better. It's kind of a new experience for me. I'm kind of learning it as I go. It's, an, it, it's a different way of producing videos. So as time goes on, hopefully I will get better at these. But I hope, nevertheless, you've enjoyed this first battle as I said to you, if you have, drop the video a like. But be sure to drop any suggestions down below in the comments for other battles I can do, other total wars I can do, and ways that I can improve this format going forward. But thank you very much for watching. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care and farewell. <laughs>